Welcome tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our WCTV Game of the Week here at Centennial High School where the Franklin Admirals come over to the Centennial Cougars in the Battle of Franklin. And Paul Brisa here along with Justin Ventlon bringing you the call tonight as the Admirals kick off to the Cougars. And what is a must-win situation if you want to make the playoffs, Justin? That's right. Both teams looking for their first region win, I believe. Keep their playoff hopes alive. Well, the Cougars, in fact, are 4-2, but as you mentioned, winless in region play. And the Admirals 1-5 on the season and also no wins in region play. So, unfortunately, Justin, we, I, we alluded to the must win. The loser, I believe, is going to have a uh, an early Thanksgiving. Tough road ahead of them. So the Centennial Cougars going to have to lean. They've been a run-heavy offense. They're going to go up top immediately and try to strike first. And a completed pass. Right off the bat, Paul, you see Centennial stretching the field to Kofi Boggs. I think Cannon Plowman, the quarterback, just a heave ho to you said it, Kofi Box. And he had, listen, I don't know if you saw it, Justin, but the ball hung up in the air quite a long time. It seemed like forever. Even though it seemed like uh, they might have caught Franklin sleeping there a little bit. So a first down for the Cougars. Plowman, a quick handoff to number 24 right there, Tanner Lee, and he is just dropped by the Admirals' defense. Number 24, Tanner Lee on the carry. Nice quick response by Franklin. Trying to He's limit the in. damage here. By number eight, Shane so the Sifford. Cougars here on second and Rocker. 12 now. Yeah. You know, coming in this game, we've seen both squads in our WCTV games of the week. And again, they both rely heavily on the run. This could be a fast moving game from the clock standpoint. So you got a babysitter, Justin. Tell her you're coming home early. Plowman on the keep. And he's going to be drugged down by number 11, Ian Arney, one of the defensive leaders for the Admirals. He takes it inside. And to your point, Paul, two of the first three plays come out of Centennial pass plays. Well, that would have, that, we would conduce, uh, say that was a drop back. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming that Plowman, who was played wide receiver last year for the Cougars, has more of a uh, run mentality, tuck it and run kind of guy. Third and one for the Cougars. Whoops. Oop, oop, oop. So your keys to the game, I think, earlier, Justin, you were talking about mistakes, right? You, you got two teams that are trying to against bid here for their first win and mistakes. Not going to help you. Not going to help you put that first W in the region column. It'll be third and six. Also, I think. I mean, we touched on it quite a bit already. It's going to be who can pass the ball, probably between the two teams. Yeah, I mean, you absolutely will take a look when the Admirals get the ball and see if they uh, make a statement from the passing standpoint. But we'll see Plowman again, a converted quarterback from a wide receiver last year, and he's going to immediately keep the ball. And he is going to be... Enough for the first down as he takes it himself and says, don't worry, guys, I got it. So first to 10 Cougars on the keeper just inside the 15. And we saw Kofi Boggs catch that deep ball in the first play of the game. There he picks up a pretty crucial block on the outside, open up a little bit more room to pick up that first down. Well, again, Centennial, probably in four down territory. Still have a chance to make a first down if needed. And there's a quick throw. Plowman creating in space is number one. Brendan Jones, but there is a flag on the play side right there. Justin. Still haven't seen a sign of, looks like they're gonna mark him up. Yard short. Yeah, so there's a flag. It looks like a holding. You, you talked about sometimes those receivers are not used to being blockers. 
Uh, you talked about Kofi Boggs earlier, and this time kind of held on a little too long, and it's kind of hard to, you know, keep that block when you're not in the right. uh, blocking position. Especially out in the open space there, you're fighting some speed out there, trying to keep him in front of you. So mistake number two of this drive by the Cougars. Ball start and now the hold. The backs him up to the Franklin 21. As the clock continues to run, 8.40 and counting here in the first quarter. Plowman going to drop back and throw again, but he's going to bide some time and just over the Ooh. outstretched arms of number 21. Plowman's pass intended uh, for number 21, Kanai Johnson. Kanai Johnson. Is it complete? Not Johnson, I, I believe, if I'm reading that right, Second a down freshman. For the Cougars. So I, 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 I think they took my – Santino Cougar said, you know what? Uh, the WCTV guy said, we can't throw the ball. Watch this. <laughs> I think it's been a pretty good 50-50 ratio so far. And to your point, season's on the line, so get some uh, players, Absolutely. see if they can step up and make some plays. Plowman on the keep. Big time run, and I believe that's going to be a first down, Justin. It looks like they're going to mark it there. On the keeper. So the Cougars without He's heavily down. relied He's running back Josh Forsey on the shelf mm -hmm. as uh, the Cougar offense with some adjustment, and maybe the passing game was part of that adjustment this week in practice. But basically, right, this is kind of like uh, playing a game of poker where you just shove – all your chips in the middle of the pile and say, I'm all in. We're going to put everything we can into winning this game. Jet sweep. And that is going to be played nicely. It's going to be just short and knocked out of bounds at about the two. First on the stop was Reagan McCloskey. Kanai but Kanai Johnson. Johnson on the jet sweep. And Reagan did a Johnson. great job of stretching that play out. Just, just didn't Jay finish Shippen. at the end. And at least slowed it down there. enough to where the Admirals could uh, convert here. Second goal. So second and goal. Possibly a little play action. Well, uh, come on, Justin. I don't think so. I'm thinking it's a We've play. seen crazier things today already. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely. Plowman. Plowman leans forward, and he's marked short. So going to be third down. And about yeah, a half a yard. Three. This one again, Plowman. Probably going to keep this one as well. And probably going to be right up behind <laughs> yep. number, number 50. He takes uh, it inside the one yard line. Keegan Scruggs. Third and goal. And the Scrugg brothers, Jeremiah Scruggs on the right hand side. Ooh. And it's going to be a score. A candid plow. A delayed call. It's a very delayed. <laughs> Everybody kind of stopped, held their breath. Almost looked like a option play that ended up just being a lead block play. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, sometimes, Justin, coaches kind of overthink things. I would have loved to see Plowman get right under center and just kind of lean forward for it. But. Muscle on muscle. Yeah. Old school Big Ten football. Big Ten Seven football. Conference. Okay, we're gonna, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of references for that. So if you're a Big Ten football fan, get ready. I'll be making fun, and Justin will be trying to counterpoint. Point. Extra point by the lefty. Number three, and it's no good. No it's good. Sean, Sam Cochran, the kicker. And mark my the words, Justin, no the missed PAT going to come yes, into play. Good. Six. Usually all we see special teams play some sort of factor into a game, and I'm sure Centennial sideline is hoping that won't be the play that will play into their fate tonight. So with six, I'm sorry, check that, 731 left in the first quarter. It is 6 nothing Centennial Cougars on the opening drive, cashing it in on the Miss PAT. Paul Brees and Justin Fentline on the call tonight on our WCTV Game of the Week as the Cougars going to kick it off here and back deep for the Admirals. 
is going to be, help me out, Justin. This is where it looks like we got uh, 27? 27, Caleb J. And trying to grab a number from the left yeah. side of the field. Sam Cochran on to kick it away. Alex Watchers, maybe, number 19. And I believe the Cougars, I doubt they kick it deep, to be honest with you. I think I've seen. Let's see if my radar's on. Yeah, well, sure, why Whoa. not, right? Nope. How about let me kick it so deep it's in the back of the end zone? You're 0 for 2 today. Uh, that's Paul. a bad sign. Not going to. Bring well, him out to the 20. Man, I've got I've got to get the spidey senses back. So here we go. The Admirals will have it. Going to be first and 20. First and Admirals first and shot on offense. Line. Quarterback is going to be number 16, Cooper Brown. And keep your eye on running back, and that's going to be Bryce Sparks. We'll probably call his name quite a bit tonight, Justin. So there goes Sparks just on a quick pitch, and the Cougar defense stops him real quick. And we're going to have a stoppage of play right here. Cougar defense did a great job of just spreading that out. Holding the edge, as they like to say. He's brought down by number 13, Joe Turning it back in. Yeah. And number 87, Second and 10. Brown, no game Brown back Second in out. shotgun formation. Three wide down here, closest to us. Brown stops, goes to the opposite play, opposite side to Sparks, and tremendous tackle. Great open, open field, field tackle, yep. And that's going to be number 17 for the Cougars. That's going to be Matthew Rowan. Might have been a game plan just to get the ball out to Bryce Sparks in the open field, see what he can do. Yeah, what do they say? A heavy dose of Bryce Sparks. Get ready. Admiral fans, the first two plays gone to their heavily relied star running back. Brown. Quick handoff to Sparks. Right back to him. And going to be short on a third and seven, Justin. Kind of an interesting call. Absolutely. Sparks again on the carry for the Too early to possibly question the call, but. Well, obviously, they got it, the, the ball in the hands of their best offensive weapon, right? Weapon, right. right. But, uh, just the way they probably got to that point was, you know. And like we said earlier in the broadcast, you got to think Centennial's. Deep to for Ready for a heavy team. dose of run tonight. Yep. <laughs> Looks like we got. Uh oh. P the punt for uh, Franklin is going to be downed at the 42. Not a bad kick there by number uh, 90, Blake Ash. And so the Cougars on their second offensive possession going to start with, well, I would call it a great field possession as on their own yep. 42 and a half. Are you feeling uh, play action pass? Are we going back up Are top? Stretch out the defense a little bit, possibly open some stuff underneath. Well, I'll tell you my biggest concern is me falling down through the press box right here. This is going to be a... They got some moon pies to it. <laughs> Who's going to break my fall down there? <laughs> so now a two-back set for the Cougars. A little one option, and Plowman's going to keep, going to get a key block again down the field. Plowman racing, going to be knocked out by number five, Nick Gacka, on a tremendous option keep on Plowman, something we haven't seen right now for the first offensive series. Now we're bringing in two backs, and we're going to make you uh, really guess who's right. And once again, I pointed out the first drive, but Kofi Boggs had a great block on the outside right there. Really responsible to break that into a five-yard, from a five-yard gain to a 20-yard gain. So the Ad Admirals having a tough time here defensively. Plowman, backside throw to number one. That's going to be Brendan, Brendan Jones. Jones. Yes. Plowman's pass is complete to number one, Brendan Jones. Listed as a quarterback. <laughs> Wait a minute. We could see a 
double pass, maybe down in the uh, this, the future. It's kind of a setup. Put that in your back pocket and see yeah. if it comes out later. Ryan Schrader. Yeah, Brendan Jones, you said it. Junior Second quarterback down. according the to Cougars. the roster that was probably created back in July. <laughs> a lot of position changes. Could be a Ryan Tannehill situation. Uh, that's right. You're exactly right. A quick handoff to 24. Tanner Lee, the sophomore, right behind the Scruggs brothers. I'll tell you what. Number 24, Tanner Lee on the carry. Tremendous push there on the right side. It seems like Centennial Justin has gone over the right guard, right tackle. Yep. Uh, you know, maybe 80% of their plays here. A lot of their runs are going to the right side there. And they're mixing it up quite well. Not very predictable here the first two drives. Again, Running back to the, to right, the right side. side yeah. yeah. This and is going to be close. It is going to be close. We'll see if the spot is going to be just short of the 25. So it's going to be, I believe they're going to mark just it down. Fourth short. down. Yeah. Yep. So here we go. Fourth and Terry inches. Again, this is where sometimes <laughs> I've seen a lot of high school he football in Williamson muscle. County. Don't get too Early fancy. Fourth and inches for the Cougars. Use your muscle up Just front. Outside. I would the I would dare say they're probably going to run to the right side. Well, you know, and I come to realize that uh, Fisher Anderson, the big lineman for Franklin, had been playing on the, uh, the defensive side opposite of the right side. So here we go. Keep. Stretched it out. Plowman, dancing, fumble, right oh. to number two. Your man, Right Kofi place, Boggs. right time. Wow. Well, you know, when breaks like that happen and you can't get them, you hope it's not a long night for you because the Admirals just shaking their head like we had a fourth and one, we had a fumble, we couldn't recover it. Literally bounced right into Kobe right. Bond's hands. Couldn't have happened more perfectly if you're Centennial. So Plowman, first and 10, a little more. This is gonna be a straight, right up the gut run by 24. Tanner Lee again. Looked like 54, Ryan Schroeder on the tackle for the Franklin Rebels. He's brought down by number 54, Ryan Schroeder. Solid four yard run, three and a half. Yeah, you know what they say, you get four every play, it's gonna be a first down. Right at the Admiral 22 yard line. Once again to the right side. Yeah. Uh, Justin, I don't know if Coach Kreisky may have seen something on film about the left-hand side of the defensive line for Franklin, but they have been yeah, riding yeah, the right-hand hash for mark here for this whole offensive series. If this was uh, still a field grass, it might be getting worn out in the right, right hash by now. He was brought down there by number 75, Drew Minge. But you usually run to where your power's at, though, too. It seems like the power side of the ball right now is that right side of the offensive line for Centennial. Going with that two-back set once again. Will they go to the wide side of the field? Nope. And a quick pitch to 21. Kanad Johnson, the freshman. Kanad Johnson takes the pitch from Plowman. And what is a, you know, the defensive coaches for Franklin may have to move an extra lineman over here. He's brought down by number four, Ashton Orton. Overload one side. Absolutely, you do. Normally it's the offense. Alex Watrous. Fourth down and a little more than a yard. So we'll try it for it again on fourth yeah. down. Wow, fourth and two. Yeah, fourth. Came in with a heavy set. Oh, man, a miss. And they went to the left side that time, and he's going to get it in Tell easy me, fashion. The Again, the credit to Plowman for handling the snap because that one came back a little quick. 
and Tanner Lee with the first down. That might have been a classic case for Franklin where you've seen so many runs go to your left side, left side, left side, and <laughs> counter the other way. First and goal. So first and goal, there's no shot for Centino to get a first down now. They're going to need to score a – if they want a touchdown, they're going to have to do it in the next four plays. And a little quick counter and a quick hit, cut, but a Ooh. tremendous open field tackle by the Admiral defense and Alec Wartress, number 19 right there. Kanai Johnson. Because Kanai Johnson looked like he had a – He was fine in pay dirt. He had a little shimmy right there. Yeah. He stopped by number 19. Alec did a good job of breaking down, going for the legs, taking out what keeps him moving forward. We got about 13 seconds left in the quarter. I think Centennial will just wind it down, take it to the other end. They are going to, looks like we're going to move to the other side of the field onto the seven yard line as the first quarter wraps up of our WCTV game of the week in the Battle of Franklin. Paul Brees and Justin Bentline bringing you the action here at Centennial High School. 6-0, and the Cougars knocking on the door. Cougar Nation, our football team received locker room upgrades during the offseason. Well, Justin, I know this is, what, officially your second game where this – got to tell you, you're part of record-breaking history tonight as currently – and I've done this for a long time. We're going to try to get an official count of number of people on top of the press box tonight. <laughs> Just don't call the fire marshal. We got about 16 people up here. I think the most I've ever seen is probably about eight. So they might have been selling these spots as a press box suite. <laughs> press box suite coming in. We're I, hey, we're getting a. Getting some, uh, I mean, with with what's going on up here, the student section's going back and forth. Just, a, just a great night for high school football. I mean, what do you call a fake summer in in the first of October? Because it's not fall. It is officially. It is officially, but uh, unofficially not. No, no. So I know they have uh, certain names for different fall weather and. Fake spring and early winter. I don't know. Yeah, this is this is very. Cougar. Here's what I do know. And I don't know if this is at your house, but there's a lot of stink bugs going around. You know what a stink oh, bug is? Yeah. Eight. I haven't seen many at our house. Knock on wood. <laughs> well, don't knock on the wood too hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Cougars here. Second quarter starting. Second and goal. Plowman and the counter. And this is right back be to the right side. The right side. Right place, right time, number 24, Tanner Lee. He went untouched right there, Paul. And did you see the pulling uh, guard and tackle right there leading the way as Looks this like is coming a, uh, a hole that the Admirals may not be able to dig out of if they don't make a play here. Tanner Lee just tucked up right behind his guard and tackle, had his hand on his back, and Lead the way, boys. And it is a timeout. Well, Centennial's going to have to burn a timeout because, <laughs> you know, the missed PAT, uh, the missed PAT early on makes it six. You score a touchdown, you think, oh, everybody just run out there. We're going to kick. Oh, they forgot. It's only 12 nothing. Do we go for two? Absolutely, they're going for two. Which way are they going to run it? I would say there's a 60-40 chance they're going to the right side. I just say 80-20. I don't know. <laughs> to see what vehicle they're bringing to the next home game at Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. I know you're waiting for uh, a big muscle play. Tanner Johnson go under center and just kind of run it up in there, but can you get three yards, four yards doing so? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, how about a little uh, run pass, jump, jump pass option. <laughs> Derek, Derek Henry, Henry style. style. Yep, got it. So, speaking of the Titans, uh, Dr. Kevin Dyson, principal of Centennial High School, in attendance, cheering on his Cougar. Cougar Nation is about to have a shot here to go up 14-0 if they convert the two-point conversion here. Oh, my uh -oh. goodness, wide open. And the two-point conversion. Is complete. 
And that's what a successful run game might do for you, Paul. Absolutely. The Admirals just sold out on the run right there. And on the backside, Kofi Boggs snuck out and touchdown, two-point conversion, makes it 14-0 here at Centennial High School. Kofi Boggs might be my halftime player of the half so far. <laughs> Gillette. Doing the, doing the small things. Absolutely. So 14 nothing. See number the, Cougars. the Cougars have a lot to cheer for. Number three, Sam Cochran lines up for the kick. Are they going deep here, Paul? I don't even want to say. Sam Cochran set to kick it away. The kick. Well, we're going to have a return. Here we go. Warchers, he's going to be tackled on the 25, and the Cougar special teams fired up. That was number 19, Alex Warchers. I would say this is going to be a on crucial drive for the Franklin Admirals. Coming out here, down 14 nothing. Well, you know, I told you the clock's going to be pretty quick tonight with all the run, and we're at 11.45, pretty much 15 seconds in the second quarter. This is the Admirals' second possession. Offensive possession of the game, correct? Correct. At that ratio, you're only going to get one a quarter. <laughs> you better got to make them count. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Cooper Brown, the quarterback. Shotgun, going to be a quick pitch to Sparks, who they seem to have been trying to get in open space, but the Cougar defense having none of it. I think the, the tough thing there, Paul, is really had no blocking help to the outside. I mean, you're exactly right. They had three receivers left, none to the right. Went to the, unfortunately, the uh, short side of the field, and Sparks with a no gain, second and ten. Number 12, Dominic Reed for Centennial Cougars are just sitting there waiting for him, essentially. And Sparks, nowhere to go after the handoff. Uh, Justin, I believe that was the fifth play, offensive play for the Admirals and five touches by Bryce Sparks. Correct. And it is third and long. And now it's a third and third and about 12. So you got to go to the air here, I would I, assume. I was going to say, what, what do you got in your playbook? I, I'm going to say a. if you're going to throw it, it's going to go to Bryce Sparks. Swing, screen. Swing, screen, something. Oh, man, look out. And oh, in, in and out. out of the arms of number 21 right there. That is going to be Alex Johnston. And unfortunate. Pass is intended as we were all looking toward Alex Bryce Sparks' way, Johnston, the tight end from the back side. Yep. Open. I think they were going to be short either way, but. Still gives your receiver a chance to make a play. We'll see if their defense can respond here. So a punt situation back deep Blake Ash for the Cougars. Is deep for the Cougars. Looks like number 11. Yeah. Kofi Boggs. No, that's nope. Kofi. And just a sky punt going to be dropped in a friendly turf roll. And actually, Check that was Kenai Johnson, Johnson was on the, the He was <laughs> yep. back there. It didn't really matter. It rolls dead. At the Cougar 42 yard line. So that looked very much like my driver off the deck. <laughs> that's, that's high and not a lot of distance. He, he teed it up too high. So, so we'll see what Centennial does here. Yeah, I mean. Do you try to run the clock out a little bit more, bleed this 
to hey, halftime listen, or it's Battle of Franklin. I think if Centennial could, they could beat them sixty to nothing if they if they. I mean, not saying they could, but I'm saying they have that if mentality. They, to. they want they we want to beat them as bad as we can. I don't. Coach Kreisky obviously wants a win for sure, but these students in uh, the communities. And wow, big hole up the middle. Still Carrying. fighting, still fighting for yards. And here comes the big run by number 24, Tanner Lee, the sophomore. Dragging Admiral tackles. That was a huge statement play right there. Huge hole, and Tanner Lee was not going to stop until he moved those chains, I don't think. You know, I think if you, on paper, if you talk about the offensive lines, you would have thought advantage with Fisher Anderson Correct. and crew admirals. But, man, the Cougars' offensive line and film study have said, listen, we're going to. They might have found something here. Yeah. Coach Kreisky, you want to run the ball? Let's do it. I'm in. Well, that play goes nowhere. That time. They actually went to the left side, and that was Rod, right, right, Justin? That might be why they're uh, <laughs> focusing on the right side. <laughs> so try to win. Shane Sifford. And number 44. So Rock a loss, there. and now second and 10 with nine minutes and counting here in the loss second quarter. Second down 12 for the Cougars. Well, Plowman put the ball in the air. From the Admiral 47 yard line. Plowman to the left side, got a man in open space, big block, carrying. Number 70 on the pull block there, looked like Donovan Smith. Made a couple nice blocks out in open space yeah. for a big guy. Takes it down to a got all, You love that, you love to see that, right? Rumbling, yeah. tumbling. Yeah. So, so, so Tanner Lee, the sophomore, welcomes that open space and going to cut that third down opportunity from Third, third and 12 to now a third and three. You want to make it manageable Absolutely. where you have options. And I believe there's zero chance of them punting if they don't. Well, to the right side we go. And a I think nice Franklin field yeah. tackle, yeah, by the Admirals. Taylor Lee again on the carry. The Admirals were able to pick up those two pulling guards tackles and fight through to make a tackle. Yeah, that was the uh, two-point, or not two-point conversion play, the touchdown play, right? Yep. From the previous uh, offensive series. And so, fourth down and two. The Cougars. And two they, the Cougars have already converted it on fourth down. Let's see if they can do it again. Plowman going to get around to the outside. The big fella leans for the first down. That was... A very athletic play. <laughs> very athletic play. <laughs> but here is a big issue, though. He's Plowman was slow to get up. But not before he picks up another clean and insurance. Farmers so first down. They have to call the uh, bullpen, per se. Brendan Jones, we've already talked about the, the receiver. Sprinting. Number one, you see him. I don't see Plowman uh, taking any more chances on a keeper right here. I, <laughs> nope. Oh, Plowman. Oh, oh man. And that Broken was just, play. Yeah. Just, I think there was a, yeah, you talked about miscommunication, I believe, by Xavier Haddix, number five. Looks like and we got that, another Cougar yeah, we down. We do have a downed lineman over there. Injury timeout. You have an injured Cougar and that's gonna on be, the field. Is that 60? Alex Melendez, the senior. And you hate to see that. Um, so, scores from around the uh, county. I believe that, uh, man, there's a big one going down, down your direction, right? Summit and Ravenwood. Battle of the, uh, the leaders in the clubhouse yep. in the uh, region. Last time I checked, 7-6 Summit. Missed extra point by Ravenwood again. Special teams. You called it, and um, that's going to be a huge one. We also will be trying to track down Brentwood and Independence. As That is I, a big I'm, one as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, And I'm sure that in the Summit touchdown, I'm sure 
one of the Wade brothers had some kind some, of effect on that. Absolutely. So if you've never seen uh, Destin, the quarterback, or Keaton, the running well, Mr. athlete, Mr. Everything, right? right? Uh, number 60. They are a sight to see Alex on Melendez. the high school football field. The C Kentucky commits. Just going to say you'll be able to see him on Saturdays next year. Yeah, that's uh, – uh, may have to see him on the uh, SEC network. I don't know if you get that in uh, your, your neck of the uh, Big Ten country. Or more of the Big Ten network. <laughs> so you actually pay for that. That's the problem. No. I, okay, good. The parents do. <laughs> What's your password, Mom, Dad? Username, right. password, please. Well, we'll – So here we go, second and ten. Oh, uh, Plowman, season, season open, but he's going to be drugged Ooh. down. Tremendous job. The hole looked like it was open, and it completely just bogged Plow down. down as Schroeder got him. So third and like 13 for the Cougars. Cannon Plowman again with the keeper, and it's – Right How many Ever. times do you go to that well? And it might be a setup play, though, too, Paul. I think so. I mean, I think they're going to, you know, they may have a situation where maybe they get a, a Kofi Boggs coming across the uh, middle of the field in the slot position. But Plowman Straight drop throw. back. Uh, up. Hey, oh, my. Oh, almost Johnny on the spot almost. Jeez. A uh, plowman hit him right in the hands. I think that might have been a classic case of hearing some footsteps coming across yeah. the middle. Absolutely. It's incomplete. Boggs dropped, and there comes the punt team for the Cougars. So the way they play defense, though, Justin, if they can back up the Admirals' offense, absolutely. Maybe Coach Kreisky thinks it's uh, a pretty better situation. Number three, Sam Cochran. And Centennial's looking to right this the ship for this rivalry. Went 0 and 2 the past two years. Versus Franklin, so see if they can get a, a win. Oh, man. Tremendous punt. Oh, going to skip the turf. Oh. Got him. Home field, home field bounce right there, Paul. So we just talked about it. The <laughs> field position game is switched in uh, the Admirals. And kind of some trouble if they want to try to get an answer. They're going to have to go 97 yards. In five minutes and 28 seconds. <laughs> Actually, ball at the three-yard line. So I think your main objective here is at least get a first down. Get a first down. Get some momentum going. And, and, get some and confidence back in your yeah, offense. You do not want to be kicking in that, uh, in that baby blue end zone because punting would be uh, – Less yeah. than ideal. Less than ideal. So here we go. Brown, shotgun, handoff, Sparks. Going to be bottled up, and the ball comes out. And it's recovered by the Admirals. Well, you always That's one, of, those, on one of the breaks that goes your way. We talked about the... Centennial fumble earlier going right to Kofi, or Kofi Boggs. This he one right to your lineman. So, yeah. So, Fisher Anderson, the lineman, 74. Biggest guy in the huddle. Comes up with the fumble recovery for the Admirals. Maybe picked up a half a yard. Might be Second the biggest down. guy in the area. For sure. So, here we go. And Sparks up. Oh, Going to try to get outside. And a... Tremendous job. Who was that on the first stop there? Sports number eight? The number game. eight, Camden Brock. Camden Brock slows him enough. Yep. Get the uh, crew. Gather the boys Nelson. together and say, <laughs> I'm going to need eight. a little help. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> One's not going to do it. But like you said, as long as you get one, slow them down. Rely on your teammates to get there as well. and Get hats on the ball, as they like to say. Third and nine. And if you're Centennial, if you can get the ball back with three minutes left. Brown straight drop back. Here comes the pressure. Screen pass, Sparks. And just not going anywhere. Just nope. 
And that was sniffed out great by 57 for Centennial. That is Jeremiah Scruggs. Good guy. You know, I saw the number 13 for Centennial coming off the edge, and I thought, oh, my, Brown is about to get in big trouble here. But uh, yeah, Joe Nelson, the end, thought he was going to have a clean shot. So the flip of the field, Centennial may actually have a better starting field position than, than they left with. That they left with, absolutely. So, And, again, punting from the end zone. I would imagine Centennial might bring some heat. Are they gonna, no, they no, do they're not. Playing, they're, they're playing for the return. And this is going to – got to come up and catch it. Muffed. Yeah. Looks like Kofi Boggs ended up coming back Let up with that. Let me tell you something. I don't know if you saw it. But Kofi Boggs could have picked it up a little bit earlier. He had 20 yards he was going to run. Easy. So Classic case of taking your eye off the ball. Yep. And you know, in practice, there's a lot of sun outside. Catching this ball in the uh, dark. Makes it a little more difficult. Could have got one of these ladybugs that have been visiting us <laughs> <laughs> on the visor. <laughs> so with three minutes and 19 seconds left, Centennial takes back over. Well, uh, what, what I would call plenty of time, right, Justin? Absolutely. Man, look at loading the box up. And that's going to be a false start. If I was, uh, this may be defensive offside. So hold your. They let hold, him let it play. Phone. Yeah. Tanner Lee on the carry. So Tanner Lee around the left side. He's brought down. Plowman's going to talk to the guy in the white the hat, five, Dick and he's going to say, "Hey, what was that?" Flag on the play. Uh, yeah, yeah, motion. What did we get for the call there? A little uh, motion. I don't know. Illegal, Illegal motion? motion. Information. Against the Cougars. You know, they need to come up with a different signal because from offsides to uh, motion to illegal shift. I don't know. Well, they didn't back, they didn't back the ball up. Should have blown the play dead, I thought. Well, they're going to try to figure it out. Why they figured it out, our score has just come in. Got an update from Spring Hill. Yeah, go ahead, Justin. Looks like Ravenwood just kicked a extra point to go 13-15. Summit with 2.35 left. So Summit leading by two. In the first quarter still. In the first quarter. So remember... I don't know if your wife's watching, but may have some extra time maybe to – she has no clue that the game's over. Or she's no. watching at home probably. Yeah. Yeah. Her, and, her and the uh, the young man. Which I, you know, I'm shocked. You, I thought you were going to name I'm, after me, but – We'll bring him to the call next next time. Okay. Well, he would have broke the uh, fire marshal code. Yeah. Good there. thing we did not bring yeah. him today yeah, then. Absolutely. Yep. So first and 15. Oh, nice. Actually, 54 right there on the play. Schroeder actually bottled that up before it could really get started. So second and 15. Or first and 15 is going to make it second and 14 and a half. That was number 75 for your Admirals, Drew Minge, cleaning things up. Well, let's get his let, – let, let's – you may remember him from your time with Drew Mingi. That does sound familiar, Seven Paul. Matters. Yep. So, Drew Mingi getting some action, sophomore style. Oh, Plowman going deep. And it's caught. Great and it's gonna catch. it's going to be a score. Great catch. Cannon Plowman says, watch this. I can't throw the ball. To number one, Brandon Jones. The listed quarterback. The Ryan Tannehill. The Ryan Tannehill of Centennial Cougars. <laughs> so, Plowman. Chuck Dollar coming out for the long snap. 
With his second long ball, this one to Brandon Jones for 41 yards. And now the all-important PAT. <laughs> We've seen it go wrong one way. The snap, the hold, the kick, and put your hands up. That is no good. But you're gonna score. Cougars 20, Admirals So with 2.23 left in the second quarter, Centennial leads 20 to nothing. And two missed PATs. Uh, I mean, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We had a score update from Thompson Station recently. It was Brentwood 14, Indy 3. Wow. With about three minutes left in the second quarter. What, <clears throat> what I would be told is Brentwood High probably one of the best two and four teams in the state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right here, the four and two Centennial Cougars Putting the uh, foot on the gas, 20 to zero, 2.23 here in the second quarter. As this game has moved along at a rapid pace. You called it, Paul. Set to kick it away. Hand off left, hand off right. Keeps the clock running. Deep ball here and there. It doesn't happen in the NFL. So return Wartress is trying to Extra effort, just going to get to the 20. Alex, Great kickoff. Watrous. Fought his way to about yeah. the 20, 21. Well, here's the question, He's Justin, for you. If the Cougars make a stop of uh, making Wilson. second to 10 or even better for them, second 11 plus, do they use a timeout? They've got two left. Yep. Can't take them with you. Yep, they do they, no carry. They do not roll over. I would say if you get a quick stop, you take one. Yep. Well, let's see here. Sparks not in the game. That's Orton, number four. Going to need a play here. And he's still oh. up. And that's going to be a gain of about six. So we'll see if Coach Kreisky, he would have loved to have him. They probably are all looking Ten at back a little bit Price Sparks at. I right. <laughs> Trying to find him in the wide slot. Yeah. The pass was complete to number four, Ashton Orton. So Orton. On the he flip side, if you're Franklin, how six, fast sir. do you operate here? First down. And you operate Johnson. like you're down 20 to nothing. Yep. Pick up a five, second I down. I would think. Brown. Going to pass to Orton. And he's going to pick up a first down. And got out of bounds. So first down, first Admirals is complete. About a minute 41. Four, Ashton Orton. Brought down by number 87, Caleb Workman. And like you said, Paul, no Bryce play. Sparks, but going to more of a four wide type set. Admirals looking for something. Brown going to tuck, run, and a great open great. field tackle, number eight for your Cougars. That's Camden Brock. I believe he had a great open field tackle when uh, Franklin was pinned a little bit farther down near the end zone, too. Well, if you're not looking up, Justin, if you're just joining us, guess what? Cooper Brown went down. The official stopped the clock thinking for an injury. So with that being said, Brown would have to sit out of play. So Coach Melton says, you know what, I'm going to call a timeout. Let's see if we can get it back in. Gets a free pass, 129 until halftime. I would think if you're Franklin, you got to start pushing the field a little bit. You got to start more seven, eight, nine yard shots. Well, positive yardage would be great at this time. Yes, but you're right. Uh, but that Centennial defense is—they're—they're they're, they're being quick, quick to the ball. And you see a lot of not only one Cougar there, but two, three, taking down the, the Admiral ball carrier. 
So a huge second down. And I believe Brown did come back in the game. And that was a, that was a free timeout for the uh, Cougars. So yep. the sacrifice of getting Brown back in the game and stopping the clock. Great protection. Orton, Number open four. Over. And that's going to be a score. Ashton Orton, 65 yards in a cloud of dust. And the Admirals are on the board in panic mode. And there's no more panic right now. Make it 20 to 6. I'll tell you what, the, the Franklin Admirals offensive line, a lot of time. A lot of time to sit back there, read the coverage, find the open man. You got to give the big guy some love. Hey, Orton out of the backfield, kind of a semi-wheel route down the seam. Here's an all-important PAT. And put it in the books. Your new score, 20-7. to and seven. And the Cougars is good. Right back in this. Score. Yeah, the Admirals Cougars with a... 20. Admirals shot of with 16 left. Shot of half. something right there. They got a shot of energy. Like, hey, okay, sitting so bad. So it took him 23 minutes to wake up, unfortunately. But uh, I know with 116 remaining, good here's the good news, Admiral fans. fans. You're going to get the ball coming out of the gate. Second, second half. Yep. Uh, second half. So they're down the track near the entrance and exit gates. Now, what, what do you do here if you coach Kreisky and the Cougars offensively? Cougar fans, if they get a CHS quick first, quick yeah, quick first, or, or even a minimal return here. They're the official fifth quarter sponsor for Cougar football and also an all-campus sponsor. Additionally, Bricks provides periodic team meals. Got number eight, Thank you. Camden Brock, and 21. Kanai Johnson back for the Cougars. Ooh, wow. And then a score update from down at Summit. Dustin Wade just put another touchdown in the books, Justin. Set to kick it away deep for the 21-13. And they showed, they showed a picture of the crowd. It looked like a college game. <laughs> and this is going to be returnable. 22-13. So Kanai going to have it up the Found seam. It, yep. And it's going to be brought down about the 38. Johnson 109 here until halftime. Takes it out over. That crowd might be better than the Rutgers Ohio State crowd tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the Cougars will have it there first to 10. So if you're Centennial here, Paul. Man. Plowman, What's your thought process? Yeah, yeah. Plowman has got had some success throwing the ball deep. I mean, why not take a shot? Just over a minute before the half. Coming at the, up at the half, Cougar Nation. Got your cheer, cheer team performing. Got your dance team performing. And the marching Cougars. Got Kenai Johnson and Kofi Boggs. Interesting play call. The handoff went to the left side. Yeah, went to the left side and kept it on the ground. I don't, Coach Kreisky, is he just uh, content of letting this run? And Rocco Panea. And if you're Franklin, if you get another stop. No. No. I think it's. Uh, I, I, take it into halftime. I think, yeah, I think we're heading to the house. And, and I know Coach uh, Melton for Franklin has got to be. Feeling a little sigh of relief. Just get points on the board. Plowman looks, plenty of time. It's going to be chased. Tremendous job by Ian Arney, but he's going to be dragged out of bounds and the clock's going to stop. That was a good job by Plowman Scramble. being aware and getting out of bounds, not having to burn a timeout. Yeah, and, and, and he's pushed out of bounds yeah, by tremendous 11. job by the Admiral's secondary right there. I mean, Plowman had. Plenty of time. He thought there'd be some separation. Seconds left in the second quarter. Looks like Franklin might be putting a couple uh, extra safeties back deep. Plowman back to throw. Short pass. Is he going to get out of bounds? It doesn't matter. He's going to have the first down. Double clock stop. 
First down and out of bounds. For those of you scoring at home, put it out on your bingo card. That's right. 13 seconds. He's brought down by Nick Gaka, but not before he gets another. Nick Gaka on the stop First for the down. Admirals. First and 10 for the Cougars. So it looks like Centennial line. might be trying to at least get in uh -oh. striking range for Plowman to throw another deep ball. Well, here's an interesting call. The Admirals call timeout, Time out. giving Admirals. the Cougars a chance to uh, kind of rally the troops here. So 13 seconds, 20 to 7. Thank you for joining us on our WCTV Game of the Week, Paul Brees and Justin Bentline. On the call here tonight on a beautiful night. You always have some pretty good uh, views of cool springs. <laughs> if you're over here at the Drury Plaza Hotel, not sponsored. Nope. We'll give you a shout out. If you're on the fourth floor or higher, you got a free uh, ticket into the game. That might be worth the stay just that. Absolutely. Also, the traffic on 65 looks like it's light tonight. We'll see. Traffic getting out of here maybe a little different. So, after the timeout, here come the Cougars. 13 seconds until halftime. Plowman back to pass. Extra protection. Quick out. And a quick stop. Great executed play. I would love to say they're trying to set up for the field goal opportunity, but the extra point. <laughs> He's one for three tonight. He gets out of bounds. So, Helped a little bit by number 24. Although I Michael think he Nichols. pulled both of them to the right. Nine seconds to go. Maybe lining up on the left hash might help him. Well, it's going to take uh, another out pattern by the Cougars. And it's going to be a Plowman first pass. down at the 40. Again, complete. This may be a situation where they're just trying to get Plowman in position to just heave it down the field. Right. Possibly one more chance, yeah, one or two. Timeout. I'm sure they're. I'm sure they've run that a hell mary esque play in practice a couple of times. So we'll see what they got Johnson their stepped out of bounds with enough yardage for another. If they haven't done it in practice, I'm sure they've done it in someone's down. backyard. Absolutely. For sure, as we are. Six seconds remaining. We're almost a little less than under an hour game time. Quickly run first half. Centennial kind of came out this first half, though, and at least surprised both of us. A little bit more passing than yeah, I think we right. had anticipated. Well, with Josh Forsey, the star running back out for the Cougars, I'm sure the game plan is different. So I'm sure maybe they asked Kenny Plowman, the quarterback for Centennial, what do you feel more comfortable with, left or right? He says right, so the trip's right, and it's just a matter of, well, he's going to run to the left, and it's, he's going to have one second remaining, and, well, late flag's going to come in. It's going to be holding, and I'm sure the officials are going to let this clock run down. Kenny Plowman scrambles. Flag on the play. I would say Coach Melton declines this and heads and to the heads house. To the, heads to the locker room. So holding against the Cougars, that is declined, and that's the end of the first half. So with the end your of the score, first half, Cougars your score on our WCTV Cougars Game of the Week, seven. Centennial Cougars lead 20-7. to seven. We'll be back with second half action. Thank you.
Centennial Cougars lead the Franklin Admirals 20 to seven in the second half of play here. Paul Brees, Justin Ventlon bringing the action. Justin, Centennial punched Franklin in the mouth and the Admirals answered with a late score to make it at least a a, a, a ball game, game again. Yeah, ball game, sure. I think that late score by Franklin is crucial to give him confidence, get him back in this game, and bonus, they get the ball to come out in the second half. Absolutely. So we'll see here if the the Cougars, the kicking game. On point. Start, yeah, starting at the 20. So, like, right, if you're the Admirals, you went heavily Bryce Sparks offensively, and that just didn't really turn out well. Sparks ended off the uh, we're all ended up off the bench. They brought in Randy Orton, the backup running back, and he caught a 71-yard touchdown pass down the seam. And it seemed like when they opened up, it's more they had a little more success. Yeah, passing the ball a little bit more, opening up that box might help Bryce Sparks find a little bit more lanes, open running room. So we'll see what they continue to do here in the second half. Well, Sparks back in the game, and they definitely went with a – Quarterback keep right there. And they use Sparks as a lead runner. And in fact, Justin, number four, it was at the quarterback position. I'll have to get my glasses back on. Ashton Orton. No, oh, they went with a. Oh, yeah, Sparks that was Ashton Orton. So Ashton Orton, who I called Randy Orton. SummerSlam. WWE was stuck in my head. Ashton, I apologize. So. A little wild Wildcat. Cat. How about that? For the Admirals. So an RKO, per se, for Orton. So a dual threat running. Interesting call here by Coach Melton in the Admirals. And it kind of goes back to our pregame talk of both teams wanting to keep the ball on the ground. Now just going with a different formation to keep the ball on the ground. Well, Orton going to run off the field as the starting quarterback for the game, Cooper Brown, trots back in in a crucial third and seven situation. Yeah, Bryce Sparks lined up to his right. And inside and credit the Centennial Cougar rush on that one to kind of get Brown to get it out of the his hands a little quicker than he probably wanted to. Had to make a decision a lot quicker, I think, than he wanted to. He was looking downfield and then saw three Centennial defenders in his face and said, let's just get rid of this. Yep. So an unfortunate three and out if you're an Admiral fan, right out of halftime. And now, with possible great field position, are the Cougars to receive the punt. for the Cougars. And once again, Centennial is going to be set up most likely with some good field position. So not a bad kick. Kanai Johnson going to let that bounce. Is he going to scoop it up? And he does. And he is thrown down. Kanai Johnson on the return. By number 12, Jackson Modell, the senior. So we saw Centennial with a good mix of run and pass in the first half. With a two-score lead, you think we'll see a little bit more on the ground here? Yeah, I would think so. Again, Josh Forsey uh, running back, not, get, not playing this Cougar, week. Cougars will take over. And we started out the broadcast by saying, you know, the Cougars a definite he run-heavy offense. First play of the game, they went deep. <laughs> they scored their other touchdown on a deep ball by Cannon Plowman, the quarterback. And now we'll see if uh, they – Mix it up again like you talked about, Justin. And well, here we go, Plowman. He, and he's got a wide open. Taking it deep. It's going to be stretched out. And Brendan Jones again. Brendan Jones, the quarterback listed, has become a primary target for Cannon Plowman. Jones, the junior, and what would be a 46-yard completion. They come out in the first play of the game in the first half of the deep ball. First play of the second half, deep ball. Softening up that front seven, probably. Man, I tell you what, two for two, tremendous play call by Coach Kreisky and the staff of the Cougars. I'm going to go ahead and take my pen out and change that quarterback to a wide receiver because I think that's where Brennan Jones has found a career so far. Yeah, Brennan Jones, you talked about it. 
Well, we're going to keep it on the ground, and that's going to be an easy score. Ooh. Well, wait a minute. I, Tanner Lee on the carry. Somehow Tanner Lee got immediately. He looked like he had plenty of space. It did. Close. Maybe let up a little bit. Takes it down near the goal line. Well, so going to be second and second inches. Goal. And we haven't seen either team go under centering tonight, and I don't think we'll see yeah, it here I either. See it here. And this may be a keeper by Plowman, the quarterback. Nope, handed off. And he I think he was stopped. stuffed again. Yeah. So credit the Admiral defense. Holding strong here. Ian Arney, Fisher Anderson, Shane Sifford. It's brought down by number 74, Fisher Anderson. They ran it. Number 57, uh, Jeremiah Scruggs, yep. yep, checks in. Maybe a little bit more yep. muscle on the front end here. They, they, yep, they went with the uh, jumbo package, per se. And they're probably going to run the exact same play to the left side, except with Plowman keeping it. Oh, and he stopped. An open field tackle by number 19. Admirals Alec Watrous. With the keeper. Wow. Big, big three set of plays there by the Franklin Admirals defense. Check that 19, Alec you got to dig deep for one more here, I would say. Well, if you joined us in the first half, you noticed a, 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 an, over an amount of abundance of carries to the right-hand side of the uh, Centennial Cougar offense. They've gone three straight times to the left side unsuccessfully, yep. I must say. And you'd also, we had two missed extra points, too. Plowman is going to have plenty of space. Going to try to outrun it. And he gets in. And touchdown, Cougars. The wide side of the field yep. doesn't really got. There was a long a lot run for of, one. <laughs> a lot of green to cover when you're on the defensive side of that. And the Admirals did, I think, the best they could in coverage there. It's just you can only guard so much of the field at, at that that place. So, so a touchdown is going to make it 26-7, and the Cougars going to go for two here. And look for, I would say, a. they've got the ball spotted on the left hash, so plenty of room to the right side of the field. Oh, and a quick out, going to try to beat man-to-man, -man and leaning in for the two-point conversion is number 21, Kanai Johnson, yep. the freshman. We've called his name multiple times tonight on this short yardage situations for Centennial. So your new score was 7.48 here in the third quarter. Centennial Cougars 28 and the Franklin Admirals 7 just down the road in your neck of the woods. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, Summit and Ravenwood in a battle of what I would call uh, trying to get the first place hold yeah. of the region. Currently the score, Summit 36 and Ravenwood 20. And ladies and gentlemen, if you had the over in that game, it's not even halftime. So 36-20 and a Shoot Barn out burner down in uh, Thompson Station. Okay, down I would in your guess. Neck of the woods. <laughs> I would guess the Wade brothers account for thirty of those thirty-six points. Well, I would say they had their hand in all thirty-six. <laughs> Whether maybe somebody else caught the touchdown. So a deep kickoff by the Cougars and going to be out and of bounds. Marked at the 20. Cougars kick. Admiral's second opportunity here. 7.48. We're almost halfway through the third quarter. I would we say may have a chance to run down to Summit to, to see the end of that game. I would say if you're in Franklin here, you got to open it up. Well, you got to open it up and start taking some shots downfield. Yeah. So they had an opportunity with the opening kickoff. They decided... They went with a wildcat with uh, Ashton Orton. And first two plays didn't pan out. They had a drop third down and had to punt, and the Cougars struck gold. And now under pressure is Brown, and he's going to be sacked. 
as Mike Keith would say. And the gentleman, Good number 46. Back. And he is sacked. By number 46, Elon Segedi. So on this, on the sack right there for in, uh, for Centennial, makes Lost it a se second and about Seven yards. 17 now. Second down for the Admirals. I think that play just developed a little too long for Franklin. And here comes the screen to Orton, and he gets tripped up by number 13. 17. Brown's pass is complete. Matthew Rowan. To number four, Ashton Orton. Yep. So Matthew Rowan. Down by number 17, Matthew Rowan. Who brings up uh, all important. Looks flag like we have a flag on the field. Well, let's see what we got. Maybe a may have been a, a man downfield. I think it was a holding on the Admirals there. Aha, uh -huh. you're exactly right. That's the tough thing about those screens is yeah. you get those big guys out in space and the quicker guys try to get around you, and it's easy to just put your paw out there and grab a jersey. So what would have been a third and short down. is now going to be a second and 22, spotted at the eight-yard line are the Admirals in an uncomfortable offensive position. Brown dancing, going to be dropped by Orton coming out of the backfield. So Once again, Bryce Sparks. Sparks. Third. Off the field. Yeah. And they open it up a little bit more. Four wide. It's incomplete. So third and 22. The Cougar and it is student and section for, the with a quick Butterfinger chant. <laughs> Maybe they are out of them at the concession stand. Maybe so. That is not even the top ten of candy choices for me, though. Halloween around the corner. That might be one of the last ones <laughs> in the bowl. <laughs> and here comes a corner blitz. Going to be picked up. And this is Orton going to try to hang on. And going to be tackled around the 14. So punting situation for the Admirals as the clock continues to run. It's complete. Orton slow to get up there. If nothing else, they're able to give a little bit more breathing room for their punter here. He's brought down. By and I'll tell you what, Scruggs. our man number 21 for the Cougars, Kanai Johnson. Kanai Johnson. I would love to see him try to be a little more comfortable catching this ball here. This is, here Cougar fans Secure it before you get your feet going. Here we go. And he, he's going to try it. Well, I don't gonna think he's going to have a go. chance on that one. i tell you what, he was oh, man, oh, he's a freshman, right? He, he, he wanted to a, stop that. That was almost a learning moment. <laughs> For sure. Clear. So, with uh, the Cougar 47. 5.51 in the third quarter, yard line. the Cougars are back on offense. Hey, speaking of another big game, Independence Cougars will take Brentwood over going at it ten. down south. And Brentwood leads 20-17. to 17. Last check, this, the winner of that game and the winner of the Summit Ravenwood game. Got a pretty good pretty good feeling at the top of the, the region at that point. Yeah, Ravenwood has already beaten Brentwood twice uh, each. I believe Summit beat Brentwood and Ravenwood just beat Brentwood. So Brentwood would a, a definite must win. And Independence. Now Johnson takes the handoff uh, for Plowman. They've uh, they beat Centennial eight, and Franklin. So kind of the into opposite the scheduling, no yes. right, with the uh, strength Second of schedule, per se. A lot of action in southern Williamson County football absolutely, tonight, though. Absolutely. So if you're trying to get on 840, coming back this direction, get ready. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, but I know you – but Independence, a very difficult to high school to uh, exit out of. Tough. Uh, on game night. Tough. So Plowman on the keeper, tremendous block. Oh, oh. And a big hit by number 44. Check that, Justin. It's me, 
Rocco 44. Rocco Panea. Rocco Panea. Panea. Yeah. Tremendous play from the linebacker. Loss of a couple. Third down for the Cougars. So this would be a huge stop for Franklin. Third and long. Get the ball back with better field position probably than they've had all night. It's like Centennial is going to come out with a pistol four wide set. Plowman scrambling. Plowman going to heave it on one foot to your man. Holy mackerel. Completed to your guy. Brendan Jones. I would say that puts him over the 150 marker tonight. Brendan Jones says, I'm never playing scout team quarterback again in practice, coach. I've got two gloves on, and the only quarterback that has successfully did that is Teddy Bridgewater. Touchdown, Teddy. How about that? Two gloves, Teddy. Touchdown, Teddy. Brennan Jones goes all more comfortable on the outside. Wow. And Plowman just a heave on that one, a big completion. Can Plowman get a middle screen to Jones? Will he figure to get another touchdown? No. And he's just short. Yeah, just Plowman short. Connects again with Brendan Jones. <laughs> and you see your, your man down here, number 21 for the Cougars. Uh, Jones is brought down by number 19, Alex That is uh, Kanai Johnson, I yeah, believe. Kanai Johnson. Yep. He was wide open. I don't think anybody was down there covering him on the uh, close side. <laughs> he looked around like, oh, well, you missed me. <laughs> kind of like the uh, Bengals-Jaguars game last night. Ball just outside so the here we go. Line. Huge second down in the – and a jet sweep. Can he get around the corner? And he's going to have a easy time with the score. Touchdown. Cougars. And if you caught that, Kanai Johnson said, if you're not going to throw to me, I'll just block for you. How about that? You know what? I love it. And we've got toilet paper in the stands. <laughs> we got uh, baby powder. Flying around. So Camden Brock on the carry, the jet sweep. So with the all important PAT, finally, oh no! I jinxed it. I Just jinxed misses it. the PAT. <laughs> <laughs> Doink! Right off the uh, upright. So your new score, three minutes into the third quarter, 34 7. <laughs> well. It's funny, the coaching staff down here talking to the uh, the kicker for the uh, Cougars. Give him a little pep talk. Sam Cochran, it's going to be okay. Keeping his confidence high, hopefully. The kicker's in their uh, mind games, right? Uh, what was our kicker for the Titans last year? One sock guy, no sock guy. Which one? I feel like the Titans have gone through yeah, well, quite a few. This was uh, Vrabel's buddy in New England, Gotkowski. Goskowski. Goskowski. Right, he, he, would, he was having trouble with the sock, and then he went no sock. Kickers are like. Back to the sock. Kickers are like pitchers in baseball. Got to have their very quirky. Right. Pre-game routine, pre-kick routine. Hey, you played baseball. Did you ever uh, touch the. Uh, touch the mound? Did you ever touch the uh, foul line as you were running into the dugout? No. You jumped over it? Yes. I'm going to mention a name here after this play, a baseball a reference, team. Turk Wendell. You oh, remember Turk Wendell? He was a very quirky oh, baseball player for the Chicago He's Cubs. He, like, brushed his teeth in between innings. I mean, uh, he jumped over the line. He, you know, had other Watchers returns it out. Yeah, it's old school Chicago Cubs. Was he a hat inside out rally cap, upside down? I don't think so. So Admiral's looking for some type of momentum. Three minutes in the third quarter, Brown back in a passing situation. The pocket's going to collapse. And the sack by number five, the Cougars. Xavier Haddix. 
Damian Haddix. Sophomore. Man, those guys are starting to kind of pin their ears back right And just say. come. Oh, man, they're. Loss of about six. So. And that's the tough part, being down a couple scores in the second half is on a defensive side of things, you just know front seven, let's pin it back and go and let our coverage guys do the rest. So Brown back, and this is straight keeper maybe, yep. Whoop. And going to be tackled inbounds. Cooper Brown, on the Brown, he was running like he was committing to the play. A little indecision. Kind of, yeah, kind of stopped a little bit. And uh, so it's he gets just past the original line of scrimmage. So that'll bring up third and 15. Oh, it's about 39 now. Picked up about five or six ah. right there. One of the Scruggs brothers, I believe Jeremiah Scruggs, trots off. Got the speed rushers on now. Yep. Well, you know, with third and ten, there's probably not a lot of run plays going on with that. Maddox is around the corner. Orton, another catch down the middle of the Brown's pass. But going to be a little short. It's complete to number four, Ashton Orton. And I believe up, oh, we have a Cougar, hopefully just a cramp. Brought down by number 44, Dylan Booten. 22. Timeout on the field. Well, check that, Injured. 23 for the Cougars. Cougars. So with 1.10 here left, Justin, let me tell you something. Uh, you got a big weekend. You got a big weekend coming up. And, I mean, I, I'm not sure what you, how you, you know, whenever I go out of town with some friends, <laughs> I call it a retreat, men's retreat. Don't say a trip. Your you know, wife thinks, right. oh, it's a retreat? Okay. Well, you're retreating up to uh, the Jersey area. New Jersey. New Jersey. So you game plan tomorrow. You got a quick stop. Quick stop at Rutgers University. First, first appearance at Rutgers University. First appearance. Ohio State coming Could be over. upset city. Well, if you're, listen, if you're calling it, uh, we'll see. Set and then, uh, Ryan Day doesn't look too too strong this year. <laughs> Big Ten insider, Justin Ventline. So here comes the punt. We'll catch up on uh, Justin's fantastic. Uh oh, here we go. This is what I've been waiting on. Nice. And uh, I believe there is a flag on the play. So this is kind of kinda negate the, 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 uh, the punt return. So but that time he did look it in. Sunday, your chance to shine. East Rutherford, He's brought down. right? MetLife Met Stadium, Jets, Titans. And number 37, Kay Hamilton. Uh, you'll be on the field. Flag on the play. Close. Clearly. Close on the, the field. Colors. Okay. I'll be in the vicinity, in the stadium. In the stadium. I love it. So. That will back them up to number 41. First away Titans game. First to 10. All right. And you're happy to uh, oblige. Happy to oblige. The problem is, it's going to be a tough Monday for you. Tough. Is it, a, is it an early game? It's a new, new kickoff? New kickoff. Okay. Here we go. Plowman going to be on the keeper. Oh, and a good tackle. Open field by number six for the Admiral. Plowman on the carry. Owen Saltmarsh. Saltmarsh. Swing out of bounds by number six, Owen Saltmarsh. Gain of nothing. Gain of nothing. Yeah. Gain of nothing. We have a score to pass on at the half. Summit 36, Ravenwood 20. So second down. Second and, oh, they moved him back. Moved him back a yard. They gave him positive yardage here. And that's going to, they're going to wind it right into the yeah, fourth. Absolutely. So, starting the fourth quarter, and your score 34 7 Cougars, Cougars in the Battle of Franklin. Edwards and we're 12 seven. minutes away from wrapping this thing up on our WCT game of the week. Paul Brees and Justin Ventline here. Cougar Nation, once again, we want to thank the call. Institute 
and Williamson Medical Center. Well, we got to talk for being about our official game day sponsor today. I got to get your opinion, right? They're I also mean, the official Alabama Ole Miss sports medicine <laughs> provider. <laughs> Jay Big Ten no comment. Big Ten Insider, insider. not a Dr. fan Jeff of Robinson Alabama the today. or Georgia, probably. We want to think Nick Saban, the Joint Institute not a big, of not a big, not a big former Michigan State, State guy, yep. right? That's where you're, you're from in that general vicinity. Correct. Yep. And Nick Saban left you guys high left and us. dry. Left us. would also like to so, thank Jimmy uh, Johns. That's all right. What if? What could have been? What could have been? Jimmy Johns, the sandwich of sandwiches. Yeah. The powerhouse of East Lansing. Uh, your thoughts on Jim Harbaugh? No comment. <laughs> and a true Michigan State fan right there. And I believe I just got notification that your Big Ten Plus network password just got changed. So your mom is. We're going to have to update that. Yeah. <laughs> mom is putting uh, Ixnay on the uh, Big Ten network. And speaking of. The Can I? Tonight Johnson. Johnson on the sweep, positive yardage. Uh-oh, and he's a little slow to get up. Be being, being only a freshman, we're going to be calling that name for quite a bit, years to come, as they say. I'm interested to see when Coach Kreisky kind of starts calling off the dogs. Really not, I mean, they're still playing hard boat teams, but there's definitely a slight advantage Cougars offensively. Correct. Maybe he's trying to see one more good drive out of his starters. Plowman going to be a keeper and a tremendous job in a late flag. Kenneth Plowman on the carry. Interesting call from the referee holding. By. That'll Actually bring it back for the Cougars. Flag on the play. Calls holding on the That'll bring it back behind the chains. Yeah. For a third and 14. It'll be third down the road. So third and, yeah, 13, 14 here. 10.58 and counting, Plowman straight drop back, scramble, throw, middle of the field. It's going to be caught. Will they give him forward progress? It's going to be close. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be marked at the 49. That was. And we're going to look and see. And the going to get a, it's going to be a stoppage of play, and I'm sure the referee. They're bringing him out. It's going to bring out the change. That's one of those things where they're like, you know, the NFL, they do that a lot, right? It doesn't look like they're close to the first down marker. Right. And immediately they're waving the chains on. They're like, let's go. They don't want any kind of. They don't want any bad beats, as they would say. Or replays. Or right. spot replays. Those are hard to uh, overturn, per se. But uh, Seen a lot of different offensive weapons from Centennial, though, tonight. Kofi Boggs. And a lot of young. Yes. I mean, these yes. Guys, sophomores and freshmen. Brandon Jones, junior. Kofi Boggs, sophomore. Kanai Johnson, freshman. A lot of promise in this uh, Cougars team. All right, here we go. Here we go. Nolensville, up 45 nothing. Our. Uh, and Insider is Lance has brought out the uh, Nolansville scoreboard. A homecoming night at Nolansville, by the way. A shout out to Doug Capella, another integral part of the WCTV staff. What was the theme this year? Do you know? The theme of uh, Nolansville High School. Yeah. I don't know. Homecoming? I don't yeah. know. Well, do you know? I don't know. Hawaii night. I don't know. Okay, Ben. Well, hard count, first down. Hard count, first down. That's a 45 yards and enough for another clean of insurance. Harbors, first down. So 10 15 and counting. And an easy first down for the Cougar offense. Quick handoff for the right side of the field. And it's going to be a 
10 yard run by the Tanner Brown. Lee. The Sophomore. 21? 24? He's down by number 11, Ian You're right. You're right, sophomore. But it goes back to our point of young talent. Wow. A lot of young talent on this Cougar squad. Before Lee picks up another clean insurance, Fobers, first down. First and 10 for now the We need Cougars. to check the offensive line. I believe the that's right 70. The Admiral, 34. Uh, 54. 70, Donovan Smith, Jr. Perfect. 54, yeah. Graham Bendorf, Jr. It's like 59, what? Bailey Pauly, senior. And then one of the Scruggs brothers, 50 and 57. I believe one of them may be younger. Keegan is a sophomore. Nogain. Jeremiah is Second a senior. So another score update, Fairview in Williamson County. Plays uh, White House Heritage in a region battle, tied at 14. Oh, and a great play right there defensively by number 11, Ian Arney, the linebacker. On the carry, brought down. By a lot of promise Arnie. on the offensive side for Centennial. Uh, Building something Arnie. special. Tell me, Cannon Plowman, the quarterback. For the I think he's a senior, I believe. Number seven. On your roster, number one. Cannon Plowman, senior. Yeah. So, Brennan Jones, I mean, is he the next guy? I don't know. Sam Cochran, number three, the kicker, was also listed as He was. Sophomore. Okay. So, it's developmental time, Coach Kreisky. Uh-oh, bad snap. And We jinxed it. Yeah. <laughs> we were giving shout-outs to all the offensive line, and uh, it looks like the center snapped Number off 54, I think it was. And the Gray Roberts, who's also a junior. They'll take over right at their 40 yard line. 54 for Centennial. Combination CHS would like to thank uh, campus sponsor Tropical Smoothie. Gray Cafe. Roberts, who's also a Tropical junior. Okay. Is ready for a fresh take on fall with a strawberry cheetah lemonade. Now smoothie. remember, one of these starting Cruiser offensive your linemen from the Cougars, number 60. Uh, uh, left the game delivery. early. Tropical that is Cafe, correct. Uh, I believe he's a senior, right? Elites. Alex, Ma yep, senior. Melendez. Hey, Cougar Nation, this is Senior Chuler. Looks like Franklin's going to trot out their starter still. Try to get a little bit more film, possibly. Learning moments, teaching moments. You can visit them at boneandjointtn.org. Let's get our rosters out from Franklin. Looks like some younger guys at the receiver spot. Looks like we got number 20 down here on our end. Jacob Dunn, Jr. So Brown on the snap. Going to quick throw. Sparks. Not another. Break one. Yep. And this is where he's the most dangerous. An open complete. field, and he's going to. Take a short pass and yard after catch. A big gain to the 30. And the He's Admiral Faithful have something to cheer about. And number four, Jaton Wilson. Pick up of about 30. It's a good design just to get Bryce Sparks out in space, middle of the field, give him the ball, and let him do his thing. So first down. Go the Admirals. Brown, quick throw to 20. Done. It's going to be stopped immediately. Might have been a little confusion on that as it looked like number 17, Riley Jordan and Jacob Dunn were both, both looking for the, the ball as it was thrown their way. And Kofi Boggs quickly on the tackle. No gain. Second down and 10. So Brown, second down. Throw in the grasp. 
And gonna be sacked and brought down by Cougar <laughs> Looks number, like number 35. 35. And he is sacked. Gus McMurray, the junior. Gus McMurray. So third and long. And long. Third down and 15 for the Admirals. Brown back, plenty of time, throws it. And incomplete to number 17, Raleigh Jordan. The freshman. freshman. How about that? So it looks like the Admirals are going to go for it right here. And Fourth down for the Admirals. And what would be a obvious last ditch effort. Try to get some positive momentum going into next week as well. I, I would assume that's what Franklin's looking for right here. Brown, rolling right, throw. Lucas Young, the freshman, on the catch, but going to be short. Brown's pass. So that'll be a turnover on downs. Centennial will take over around the 25-yard line. Show Nelson brings it down. Show the line to gain. With 5.17 left in the fourth down. quarter. It looks like uh, Cannon Plowman's trotting back out there, Paul. Well, I, I am shocked by that with 5-17, but in a battle of Franklin, Centennial, and Franklin just kind of leave everything out there. To the left side goes number 24, Tanner Lee. On the carry. Tanner Lee gain of about pretty much nothing. Of Admirals. I would think we're going to see a couple more runs here. Let's hear it. I would think so. And I'm sure Coach Kreisky is saying, stay in bounds, guys. Stay in bounds. Stay in bounds and ball security, high and tight. Graham Bindorf, Gray Roberts, Bailey Pauley, and Donovan Smith. Second down, quick handoff to number two. Stopped immediately by Shane Sifford, number eight, right there. It's me, Kofi Boggs on the carry. Yeah. Kofi Boggs on the carry. He stopped by number eight, Shane Sifford. Third down, 11 for the Cougars. Brings up third and 11. Four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And the Cougars going to take their time getting this playoff. See the field judge start counting down. Just an inside screen here is going to be dropped. Uh, Kofi. Yeah, Kofi Box. Number two, Kofi Box is incomplete. Right, and what I would Freeze say was going to be. An opportunity for him to probably convert the first down. Yep. Instead, Centennial sends out the punt team. Franklin Returner sent up on about the 45. Oh, and a beautiful punt. Going to be Oh, oh. Close. <laughs> some indecision there. Yeah. Rolls all the way down to the Admiral. Looks like that was number 13, Could Gage Wilson, Wilson, back to recover. The Admirals will take yeah. over first and ten. Gage Wilson. Made a business decision. 
And it was Mr. Sisson probably did. He was very close to getting hit with that ball and he couldn't catch it. So the Admiral's offense trots out. 3.30 remaining here. Cooper Brown back. He's looking, plenty of time. Finds wide. a wide open receiver. Yeah, Lucas Young, another freshman. So a lot of young. young Seen some, some young talent on yeah. both sides now. Impact. Down's pass is complete. Franklin's going to more Coming a little, little hurry up here. Yeah, absolutely. So with the clock winding. Eight, Camden Brock. Brown. Shotgun. And it's going to be rolling to his left. Oh, and that's a problem. And number seven for Franklin. Brown scrambling on the play. Regan McCloskey. McCloskey with a crackback, defenseless that's, receiver. That is something that. Oh, they got targeting, in fact. So. That's one of those things First the officials down. are purposely watching for. Absolutely. So after that play. So a little. Yeah, that's going to back him up for sure. And five years ago, that. Clean. Yep. That's a great block. That's a highlight tape on your huddle. Absolutely. So with the uh, CTE research, trying to protect the players a little bit, trying to take that out of the game. That's a no-no. Remains first down. So first and 25 after the personal foul. Brown in a host of trouble running, scrambling. Almost picked off by your number man, two. Number two. Kofi Boggs. Kofi Boggs. The guy's been all over the field. Intended for <laughs> on both sides of the ball. Reagan McCloskey almost intercepted by Kofi Boggs. Second down and long for the Admirals. Well, what do you got in the playbook, Justin, for a second and 25? Pretty limited with your options. <laughs> Down by 27, <laughs> right? It's uh, just a positive, looking for positive yardage here, I think. Oh, and from the linebacker spot, quickly upfield. 87. 87. It's a unique linebacker number, but that's going to be Caleb Workman, Jr. <laughs> Caleb Workman. That man was shot out of a cannon right there. That was. Some that was some speed. Covering ground quickly. Back to the Admiral 26. So third and 28. Uh oh, Brown getting some positive yardage here. And shoved out of bounds after a pretty good gain. Of about maybe 19 yards, so. Got back to the sticks. Ma manageable, maybe fourth and eight. Just run out of bounds by number 13, Joe Nelson. Number 87, Caleb Workman had him lined up again. A big game, <laughs> but it is fourth down. Little juke, eight. little shimmy. Found some open space to get some uh, positive yardage. And we're going to have a stoppage here by the Officials. So, 141 left. Got to give a quick shout out to Madison, our camera person up here, up top in the press box. Has uh, braving the shoulder to shoulder, man, standing room only seats up here. Like a, you're in an elevator in, uh, in between floors. Nobody can get off here in the uh, off their floor, but unbelievable. But tremendous job I heard tonight 
bringing you the clear action. And a throw, and a catch, and a first down. Pass is complete to number five, Nick Gaka. Nick Gaka. Forced out of bounds by number four, Jatan Wilson. Nick Gaka. The result is the underneath route. Looks like a flood. At the Centennial 41. Got about a minute 50 left in the game. And that was a that was a good throw by Brown running to the left, right? I uh, also want to give a shout out to Lance who's provided some updated scoring from Williamson County. Oh my. It's gonna be a tough throw. But you know what? Not a bad Not effort a, there. Yeah. 20, 21. Intended for number 20. Alex Johnston. Alex Johnston. I thought Brown he did had all, no, he, all he could do right there. I thought he had no shot to even get it back Second to the line of right. scrimmage. So a tremendous throw. And do we have one more scoring update from Summit High School? And here comes Lance. Don't ever ask him. It's the same. It's the same score, 36-20. Lance, if he's a Ford guy, he's a Ford guy. Another so rollout. Another rollout. And that one's just a little bit pass, short. Pass. So third down. Intended for Alex Johnston. Next week. Is it complete? It'll be third down for the Admirals. Looks like Brentwood takes the victory. The victory? No, no it's over? Down in Thompson Station, a 20 to 17 final. Well, how about that? I, I thought this game was going quick. I was Maybe really some cool. more runs. <laughs> Absolutely. 20 to 17. You know, Indy likes to put the ball up. They do. And so. Coach Scott Blade likes the little air raid offense, I would call it. Absolutely. Third and 10, Brown throw. And going to be intercepted by number 12 for Centennial. Will he have a shot to take it to the house? And he's going to be... Just tackled. Yeah, just tackled by 66. But that's number 12, Dominic Reed for the Centennial Cougars, and that might do it. And with the Stone Cold Stunner music, that's a one, two, three. And a, a new champion for the Battle of Franklin. The Centennial Cougars are going to wrap this up. Next week. Yes, back to next week at Summit High School. A battle of Thompson Station. Spring Hill, I've been corrected. Summit and Independence. Either way, there's a lot of love-hate relationships down there. Border battle is what I've been corrected again. Double correction. Border <laughs> battle. And there's the knee by the Cougars. And they're going to wrap this thing up. And the victory formation, Cam Plowman takes the, a knee. The, the, the Matt Kreisky's favorite call offensively here, the victory formation. And with the loss tonight, that'll be a big one for Indy. And we are inside that, that is a big of one, one minute to play. So Second down Cougars. Indy in a must-win situation next down week. Down against Summit. I mean, I think they're, pop, they're in the playoffs, but, man, they don't want to – Get themselves in a fourth place position, but you'd like to host. We'd like a playoff. To, like to for sure. The Cougars, on the other hand, also putting themselves in a great and position. And takes another knee. So that knee is going to wrap it up here for our WCTV game of the week. Justin, have a good time on your men's retreat. Enjoy some football action for sure. Double football Saturday, Sunday, Monday night. I, I love it. For your final score, our WCTV game of the week, the Centennial Cougars win the battle of Franklin 34 7. Paul Breeze, Justin Finlon, the whole WCTV crew, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week at Summit High School.